All right, we got lesson 2.3.2, equation of a line through two points. This is our last lesson in unit two. So let's just go ahead and get started. This one shouldn't be too long. So we've got the table, and this table represents uh, points on a line. So I've got my inputs, my x values, my outputs. Now all of these are points on the same line. So let's find the slope of that line. I'm just going to pick the first two points. Uh, I'm going to do 97 minus 64 because we're going to do the change in y divided by the change in x. So I'll do 97 minus 64. And then the changes in the x would be 29 minus 18. So on top, what's that? 33. Bottom, we get 11. So we see that three is our rate of change or our slope. All right, now, does it matter which points I use? I use the first two points. Well, I told you at the beginning that this, these were all points on the same line. Well, points between, if you pick any two points, they're gonna give you the same slope because they're on the same line. So does it matter which points we use? No, not at all. You could have used any, two points on that line, and you would have gotten the same slope as three. If you don't believe me, go back, check your work, and pick any two points you want. All right, so now we're going to write the equation of the line. Now in the last section, we found out that if you had the slope and any point, then you could write the equation of the line. And we have now the slope. So it started off where we didn't have the slope, but since we had points, we could find the slope. So now, like lesson 2.3.1, we're going to just finish this off. So we're going to use y equals mx plus b. Let's use, mm, let's go ahead and use this point right here. So I'm going to use 14.52 as my point, plugging it into y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to use y equals mx plus b. I know that my y value is 52 because that's what I picked. So I'm going to say 52 equals m, we just said was 3. x is 14. And then we're looking for b so we can finish off our equation in slope intercept form. So we'll do 3 times 14, which is like what, 42? So we do 52 equals 42 plus b. Subtract 42 from both sides, and we get that b is equal to 10. So now we know the equation of our line. Our line will be y equals m was 3 x plus b and b is 10. All right, once we have the slope, which we found up here, does it matter which point we used? No, because all of these are points on the line. All you need is the slope and any point on the line. All five of these were points on the line, so I could have used any one of them. It doesn't matter. I would have still gotten y equals 3x plus 10. Now, how can we verify that we're correct? Well, to verify that we're correct, we should probably plug in one of the points we haven't used yet. So, like, we haven't used uh, the negative 27, negative 71. So, if we plug in negative 27, negative 71, we should get, let's see, 3 times 27 is 81, or negative 81. Negative 81 plus 10 would be negative 71. So, yeah, it does work. So, how can we verify that we're correct. Just plug. I misspelled plug. That's pretty bad. Plug in any of the points not used. So just use one of the points that we didn't use previously. If it works out, there you go. We're done. All right, so we just have uh, two more problems left. So uh, remember way back we had uh, the people who had the factory that made lines? Yeah, those people. Well, they came up with this great idea. 
they're going to make up a new logo. They've got two designs for their logo. Personally, I think design A is better, but anyways. Uh, and each of these logos that they design are made out of four line segments. So I've got one line segment here, another line segment here, another line segment here, and another line segment here. What we're going to do is we're going to find the equations of the three line segments. So I'll do the first one. And then you can do the other three. So I want to find the equation of this one right here. So I've got my x and my y, my x and y. So I'm going to start to find the equation. I'm going to do the y equals mx plus b, but I need the slope first. So I'm going to do the change in y. So it's 278 minus 168 divided by the change in the x's. Now since I started with 278 on the x's I have to start with 57. And then that's uh, 35 down there. Okay, so this is finding my slope. 278 minus 168, how much is it? Is it like 90? I think it's 90. And then 57 minus 35 is uh, 22. Let me make sure I'm getting this right. 278 minus 168. It's early in the morning, so I don't know. It's 110. Wow, I was way off. See? Early in the morning. I can't think. All right, and then 57 minus 35 would be 22. Okay, we can reduce 110 by 22. It'll come out to 5. So I now know that my slope is 5. What are we missing for the equation? We're missing the y-intercept. So I'm going to use y equals mx plus b. So instead of, let's use, I'll use the smaller numbers. So y is 168 equals m, which is 5, x, which is 35, plus b. All right, so I've got 5 times 35, which comes out to 175. I'll subtract 175 from both sides, and I end up with negative 7. And so my equation for line 1 is y equals... 5x minus 7. All right, so I'm going to pause here. I want you to do that for the other three lines. All right, so line 2, line 3, and line 4. So I'm going to pause in 3, 2, 1, and then we'll check our answers. Okay, pause, please. All right, so here's the rest of them. In red, I've got line 2. So I did 190 minus 168 over 79 minus 135. You got 22 over 44. That's one half or 0.5. So I decided to pick which point. I used the 168.35. So I did 168 equals one half of 35. So this is the y. This is the x. I got 17.5. Subtracted it, and the b was 150.5. So my equation is y equals one half. That's the slope. X plus 150.5, that's the y-intercept. For the brown one, that's line three over here, I worked out the slope. I got negative one-half, watch your negatives. Plugged in um, 79,190, so I plugged in this point right here. So 190 is the y, m was negative one-half, or negative 0.5, times 79. So I got negative 39.5. And then I had to add that to both sides, and I got 229.5. So my equation is y equals negative 1 half x, because that's the slope, so negative 0.5, and then plus 229.5. For the last one, in green, line 4, this is a horizontal line. So when you take your y's, you get 0 over some number here. It doesn't matter what number it is, because you're going to get 0. So if you plug in any of the points, 
you get 168 equals 0 times whatever. I have chose this point, 35. 0 times 35 is 0, so you get b equals 168. So your line is y equals 168. So it's a horizontal line. y equals 168. All right, so the last thing we're going to do is notice that these are segments. These are not lines. They do not continue forever. So we need to, in our equation, denote what the domain and the range is. So for the domain, for line 1, we're looking at our x values. Well, the smallest x value is 35, and the biggest x value is 57. So for our domain for this one, our domain has to be between 35 and 57. And the domain is our x values. So x has to be less than or equal to 57, and x has to be greater than or equal to 35. And you're reading this one backwards, even though this is a less than or equal sign. If you're reading it backwards, it's x is greater than or equal to 35. So that would be our domain. The domain values have to be between 35 and 57. For our range values, for the first line, the range values are the y values. Our smallest range value is 168. Our largest range value is 278. So our range would be 168 is the smallest one, less than or equal to. Now our range are our y values. So in the, in the middle here, we put y, and then less than or equal to. And then the biggest y value is 278. All right, let's do one more, and then you'll do the last two. So for our second line here, our domain values, which are our x values, what's our smallest domain? 35. Our biggest domain is 79. So 35 has to be less than or equal to x, less than or equal to the biggest domain is 79. For our range values, these are our y values. Our uh, smallest y value is 168. Our largest y value is 190. So it have to be between 168. And our range values are y values, so you have to put a y in the middle here. And then 190. So since these are not lines that extend forever, we have to show when the lines behave like this. And they only behave between the domain values of 35 and 79 or the range values of 168 and 190. Okay, go ahead and do line 3 and 4 on your own. I'll pause real quick. So 3, 2, 1, pause your screen and do the domain and range for the brown and the green. Line 3 and 4. All right, so for the third line, uh, this is the one going from 79, 190 to 123, 168. My domain value, my x values went from 79 to 123. So 79 less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 123. My range values was 168 less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 190. For my last line, uh, line 4, my domain values went from 35 to 123. So 35 less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 123. My range value was interesting. There was only one possible range value, 168. So that's the only number that the range could be, was 168. All right, so at this point, we've got one more design. Just let me show you, come on. Is there really any question as to which design should be picked? It's definitely the better design for the line company. Who would want that? It's ridiculous. Anyways, the next design also has three or four uh, line segments in it. And so you're supposed to just do the same thing with this one. So this is a little bit of extra practice. I'm going to pause and then just give you all the answers for it. So I'm going to pause in three, two, one, do some extra practice. Make sure that you're getting this. Uh, this stuff is important. All right, I'm going to pause in three, two, one. 
All right, so here's my final answers. So for this first line, I got y equals negative 2x plus 183. The domain went from 21 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 64. The range was 55 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 141. For the second line, this one right here, I got y equals 1 half x plus 23, or you could wrote 0.5x. The domain was going from 64 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 128. The range was 55 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 87. The third line was the horizontal line. That's y equals 45. The domain was 89 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 130. The range could only be 45. Last line was this steep decreasing line right here. It's y equals negative 7x plus 668. Domain is 86 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 95. And range was 3 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 66. All right, last thing we got for this unit is our methods and meanings. And this is just really a review of all the really important things about writing equations for lines. Now, we have actually seen three different ways that we could write a line. The first thing that we can have if we write a line is if you know the slope and if you know the y-intercept, well, then writing a line is really easy. All you have to do is plug in m and b into the line. So if they give you that, great, you're good to go. The second thing that we saw was what if we knew the slope and we knew a point? Well, if we know a slope and a point, so this one says we've got a slope of negative 4 and passes through 530. Well, then we wrote y equals mx plus b. We plugged in for m, and then we plugged in the y and the x to solve for b, and then we could find the equation from there. And then lastly, today we learned if we have two points, well, it's just like doing that last one. All we have to do first is we have to add in an extra step where we find the slope first and then use one of the points, and it doesn't matter which point we use. So here we use our change in y over change in x and find the slope. We find out the slope is one-third, and then we can pick either one of these points to plug in for our x and y so that we can solve for b after that. So there's three ways to do it. They give you m and b, and then you just write y equals mx plus b. What if they give you a slope and a point? What if they give you a slope and a point, like this example here, then you plug it in and solve for b. What if they only give you two points? If they only give you two points, first you find your slope, and then you plug in one of the x's and y's to find b. Done. So that is just kind of overall in general what we should have learned during this unit. Thanks for sticking with me. Be prepared for unit three. Thank you. Bye-bye.